Breathing is a natural thing. Breathe in, breathe out. Not much to it, right? Well, guess what? There's actually a wrong and a right way to get oxygen into your system through your lungs. Hi viewers, and welcome back to Bestie. Just by breathing incorrectly, you might be messing up your sleep, mood, digestion, heart, and even nervous system. You can correct all these problems plus be more energetic, have better health, decrease anxiety, and less fear by learning the proper techniques of breathing. And in today's video, we'll tell you what they are. From breathing silently, counting your breaths, watching your posture, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, staying hydrated, and more. Watch until the end to learn about all of them. Number one, breathe through your nose. Every breath you take should go in and out of your nose. You can think of your nose as a little factory that refines and prepares the air coming in to be used by the body as efficiently as possible. When you breathe through your mouth, the lungs get more unfiltered air that's raw, cold, dry, and full of viruses and bacteria. So be kind to your lungs and breathe through your nose. If you feel like your nasal passages are too tight to breathe through, that's probably because you've been breathing through your mouth for so long that your nose has adapted. It usually doesn't take more than a couple days of nose breathing to open up your nostrils again. Are you a nose breather or a mouth breather? Let us know in the comments below. Number two, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Regular exercise keeps your lungs functioning well, and a well-balanced diet can help you stay active. Avoid large meals and foods that cause bloating to prevent the abdomen from pushing up and limiting the diaphragm's movement. If you have lung disease, try relaxation exercises to stay calm and in control to avert hyperventilation. Also, pay attention to air quality in your area and monitor daily levels of irritants, pollution, and allergies that can affect your breathing. Breathing out of your nose will be more of a challenge when you're sick and have nasal congestion, but staying hydrated can help. Hydration helps thin secretions and helps the mouth and throat add humidity to the air you breathe. Ask a doctor about over-the-counter prescription medications that reduce nasal congestion and make sure to get your annual flu vaccine. Number three, build up your stamina. Though it might be hard to exercise while you're short of breath, working out is often one of the best things you can do for your heart and lungs. A daily walk or another type of exercise will strengthen the muscles you use to breathe and make your body more efficient at using oxygen. Be sure to check with your doctor first. Number four, breathe silently. Coughing, snoring, sniffling, and so on are suboptimal breaths in disguise. It's easy to neglect all the sounds we make, but a breathing pattern that contains a lot of them puts a considerable strain on your body. The breath loses its rhythm. Before we sigh or cough, we usually take a big breath, which leads to irregular breathing. Snoring means we have to compensate through breathing faster. A lot of us breathe quicker and louder when we talk. All these noises and talking lead to incorrect breathing. Number five, breathe with the diaphragm. The air you breathe in through your nose should go all the way down to your belly. 70 to 80% of your inhaling should be done by the diaphragm so that your breathing is nice and deep. This helps your lungs with gas exchange because it's much more efficient in the lower parts of your lungs. The diaphragm also massages your liver, stomach, and intestines, giving these organs a rhythmical balance. Your immune system gets the help it needs to get rid of the waste products from the bowels. The pressure in your chest and belly is decreased, so your heart doesn't have to work as hard. The chest becomes more relaxed, and so does the neck and shoulders. As a result, the likelihood of pain in these areas goes down. Number six, keep it simple. Sometimes you may overthink breathing, but it's important to remember that your body is built for it. Your respiratory system knows exactly how to tell you to change your depth of breathing, depending on your activity. Along with the kidneys, the lungs keep the blood's pH in a very tight range to allow all body functions to occur. There are receptors in your body that constantly monitor the blood's oxygen and pH levels. They automatically send signals to your brain to tell you how often and how deep to breathe. Number seven, try not to hold your breath. You may be holding your breath unconsciously, especially when doing activities like lifting or even walking. Try to exhale two to three times longer than you inhale but don't force air out. Focus on exhaling during the exertion portion of any movement, especially when lifting. When you walk, inhale in one step, then exhale on two to three steps. Number eight, count your breaths. You can increase your lung capacity by increasing the length of inhalations and exhalations. 
Start by counting how long a natural breath takes. If it takes to count of five to inhale, it should take to the count of five to exhale. You want them to be of equal length. Once you've discovered the count of your average breath, add one more to each inhale and exhale. Do this until you can comfortably extend the length of time it takes to fill and empty your lungs. The point is to avoid straining or being uncomfortable. It should be a gradual and easy process. Number nine, watch your posture. Since the lungs are soft structures, they only take up the room that you make for them. You want to occasionally sit tall and reach overhead to make more room for them. A simple technique for giving your lungs even more room is leaning back slightly in a stable chair, lifting the chest and opening the front of your body as you breathe deeply. Bad posture can lead to a lot of problems, back pain being one of them. You can manage it by doing correct exercises. To know which ones are best for it, watch the video titled 8 Safe and Effective Exercises for Lower Back Pain. Now back to tips that'll take your breathing to the next level. Number 10. Practice Simple Deep Breathing Deep breathing can help you get closer to reaching your lungs' full capacity. As you slowly inhale, consciously expand your belly with awareness of lowering the diaphragm. Next, expand your ribs, allowing floating ribs to open like wings. Finally, allow the upper chest to expand and lift. After this, exhale as completely as possible by letting the chest fall. Then, contract the ribs and finally, bring the stomach muscles in and up and lift the diaphragm and expel the last bit of air. Number 11. Breathe rhythmically. Everything has a natural rhythm. The ocean waves, the seasons, the moon. Your body is no different. The rhythm of your heart is measured in EKG and the brain in EEG. The hormones in the body follow our natural rhythm. One example is melatonin that's released when you're going to sleep. Optimal breathing is no different. When everything is in tune, your body functions at its very best. Number 12. Protect yourself from pollution. Air pollution is taxing on even healthy lungs. Though people with lung problems are especially susceptible, pollutants in the air can build up in the lungs and cause the lungs to lose function. The more pollution the body is exposed to, the harder it is to clear the junk out of the lungs. For people with asthma or COPD, heavy air pollution can cause coughing and wheezing and contribute to cardiovascular problems. Over time, people with healthy lungs can develop the same problems. It can be difficult to avoid pollution without moving to another city. But exposure can be reduced by minimizing the time in the car and reducing outdoor activities on days when the air is bad. Exercise indoors when necessary and live away from highways if possible. Number 13. Breathe relaxed. No matter what you want to do, you'll do it better if you're relaxed. Since your breathing reflects your thoughts and feelings, situations that make you feel tense also lead to tense and stressed breathing patterns. That way of breathing that leads to lack of oxygen which in turn makes your body and brain even more stressed. By taking control of your breathing and making it more relaxed, your body tunes in and becomes relaxed as well, which leads to better functioning in general. When your body is relaxed, your health is good and your energy is high. It becomes easier to be happy and loving towards yourself and others. Number 14. Analyze your breathing habits. To change something, you first need to become aware of what needs to be changed. So, pay attention to how you breathe in these different situations. What's your breath like at different times throughout the day? How does it change as your mental status changes? How do you breathe when you're focused, angry, stressed, driving, watching TV, so on? Try to figure out when your breathing patterns are suboptimal and why it happens. Number 15. Stay hydrated. Getting enough water is as important for the lungs as it is for the rest of the body. Staying well hydrated by taking in fluids throughout the day helps to keep the mucosal linings in the lungs thin. The thinner the lining is, the better the function is. While these tips definitely help you breathe better, one of the most important things needed to keep your breathing efficient is well, you guessed it right, a healthy pair of lungs. No more by watching 19 foods that improve unhealthy lungs and help you breathe easy, or learning about warning signs that your lungs are gasping for help. These two videos will definitely get your lungs back to the glory days and have you breathing easy. What breathing mistakes have you been making on a daily basis? Let us know in the comments below.